In most of the problems related to the equilibrium of a point mass or a rigid body, we can find both unconstrained and constrained forces among the forces acting in the system. The constrained forces are not predetermined, but they must be taken into account in the condition of equilibrium. We have already demonstrated that a rigid body is in equilibrium if the resultant force F of all the forces acting on the body and the net torque tau generated by these forces with respect to an arbitrary point vanish. If the forces F1, F2, ellipsis, Fn are applied on the body at the points of applications given by the position vectors R1, R2, ellipsis, Rn, then this condition is formulated by the following two equations. The vector sum of the forces Fi from I equals 1 to N is equal to 0 and the vector sum of the torques tau I produced by the forces Fi, that is the cross product of the position vector Ri of the point of application and the force Fi from I equals 1 to N vanishes. For the sake of brevity, we show only two forces F1 and F2 applied on the body at the points P1 and P2 described by the position vectors R1 and R2 with respect to an arbitrary point O, and their resultant force F. Since these equations describing the condition of equilibrium contain both unconstrained and constrained forces, it is often very complicated to solve such problems. It is especially true in the case of systems that consist of several parts, like engines or various machines. Since the condition of equilibrium must be applied for each element of a complex system, it is crucial to find a principle of mechanics free from constrained forces reducing the complexity of the problems related to the equilibrium of such systems. Let us first consider one of the simplest mechanical systems, a mathematical pendulum, and suppose that we displace it slightly either from its instantaneous position P or from its equilibrium position P0, as seen in the figure. Such a merely virtual but possible infinitesimal displacement allowed by the constraints like the thread of the pendulum is called virtual displacement and it is denoted by delta R. The infinitesimal work done along the infinitesimal displacement delta R is called virtual work and it is denoted by delta W. In the case of the mathematical pendulum, any virtual displacement can either be perpendicular to the thread as the displacements delta R1 and delta R2, or reduce the stress in the thread to zero as the displacement delta R3. Here the unconstrained force F acting on the bob is its own weight given by the mass M of the bob and the gravitational acceleration G, whereas the constrained force F' prime is exerted on the bob by the thread. When we studied constrained mechanical systems, we saw that the work done by constrained forces is always equal to zero because the line of action of these forces is perpendicular to the displacement of the body. In this example, the constrained force F' prime points from the bob towards the suspension point of the pendulum along the thread, and so, it is perpendicular to the displacements delta R1 and delta R2. In the case of the displacement delta R3, the thread is free from stress and there is no constrained force acting on the bob. Therefore, the virtual work done along the virtual displacements delta R1, delta R2 and delta R3 from the point P by the unconstrained force F is positive, zero and negative, respectively. Similarly, the virtual work done along the virtual displacements delta R1, delta R2 and delta R3 from the equilibrium point P0 by the unconstrained force F is zero, zero and negative, respectively. Here the unconstrained force represents gravity, and the work done by gravity is positive, zero or negative depending on whether the displacement of the bob decrease, does not change or increase its height. This example shows that there is no virtual displacement from the equilibrium state along which the work done by unconstrained forces is positive. Another example is a lever, that is a rigid road that can be rotated about a fixed axis O passing through the pivot point. Let the forces F1 and F2 be applied at the ends of the lever. In this case the virtual displacement is the infinitesimal rotation delta phi about the axis O, where the virtual work delta W done by the forces rotating the lever is equal to the torque generated by the forces times the infinitesimal rotation. Then the work delta W1 done by the force F1 is given by the product of the magnitude of the force F1, the length D1 of the lever arm and the infinitesimal angle of rotation delta phi. Similarly, the work delta W2 done by the force F2 is given by minus the product of the magnitude of the force F2, the length D2 of the lever arm and the infinitesimal angle of rotation delta phi. The net work done by the unconstrained forces is just the sum of delta W1 and delta W2 written as the difference between F1 times D1 and F2 times D2, times delta phi. If the lever is in equilibrium, that is the forces applied on it are in balance and the net torque generated by these forces vanishes, then F1 times D1 is equal to F2 times D2. As a result, the virtual work delta W is equal to zero. Conversely, if the virtual work delta W is equal to zero then F1 times D1 is equal to F2 times D2, which gives a vanishing net torque.
In the two examples we introduce the concept of virtual displacement with the following important properties. A virtual displacement is an imaginary displacement of a point mass or a rigid body, and not related to the external forces acting on physical objects. A real displacement would require finite time during which a point-like or rigid body might move and forces applied on it might change. By contrast, the virtual displacement of a body is a small instantaneous change in the coordinates describing the configuration of the body. It therefore occurs without the passage of time and is defined as any small displacement consistent with the constraints imposed on the motion of the body. The imaginary displacement is only assumed to exist so that various possible equilibrium positions of the body may be compared to determine the correct one. By definition, a virtual displacement conforms to the instantaneous constraints, and hence its direction is always perpendicular to the constrained forces exerted on the body. As the second example shows, virtual displacements involve not only small translations of a body but also its rotation through a small angle about a given point or axis. The instantaneous displacement of a point of a rotating body is perpendicular to the line connecting the point and the point or the axis of rotation, which is the line of applications of the constrained forces fixing the point or the axis of rotation. As a result, any displacement due to a rotation is also perpendicular to the direction of the constrained forces. Although a virtual displacement being only an imaginary and instantaneous displacement of the body is not related to any external force, we can still assume that a force is exerted on the displaced body. We therefore introduce the concept of virtual work, defined as the work done on the body by a force along its virtual displacement. If the force F is applied on a rigid body then the virtual work delta W done on the body the force along the virtual displacement delta R of the body is given by the dot product of the force F and the displacement vector delta R. The virtual work done along a virtual displacement is an imaginary quantity as well, and as the examples show, the comparison of its values computed along various virtual displacements of the body from various possible equilibrium positions helps to determine its correct equilibrium position. Since a virtual displacement is perpendicular to the line of action of the constrained forces, the work done by such forces along any virtual displacement is always zero. Then constrained forces have no role in the analysis using possible displacements of rigid bodies from equilibrium, and we only need to determine the virtual work done by the unconstrained forces acting on the displaced body. After clarifying the concept of virtual work, we can draw a conclusion from these two examples which prove to be a general condition for equilibrium. This condition is known as the principle of virtual work formulated by Johannes Bernoulli in 1717. The principle states that a mechanical system is in equilibrium, if and only if the resultant work done by the unconstrained forces acting on the system along any virtual displacement of the system is equal to or less than zero. The principle of virtual work is one of the most insightful findings in mechanics leading to the discovery of the law of the conservation of energy. We can interpret this principle as follows. Unconstrained forces generally do positive work, and if it is not possible to do positive work by such forces starting from a given initial state of a body or a system of bodies, then the body or the system stays at rest. The mathematical formulation of the principle of virtual work is the following. If the unconstrained forces F1, F2, ellipsis, Fn are applied on a system at the points P1, P2, ellipsis, Pn, and delta R1, delta R2, ellipsis, delta R n are arbitrary virtual displacements of the points of applications of the forces, then the virtual work delta W i done by the force F i along the virtual displacement delta R i of the points of application, can be written as the dot product of the F i and delta R i for i running from 1 to n. Since the net virtual work delta W done on the system is the sum of delta W i for i equals 1 to n, the principle of virtual work can be expressed as the inequality stating that the sum of the dot product of the F i and delta R i for i equals 1 to n, is equal to or less than zero. In the case of many mechanical systems like a lever in the figure, for any virtual displacement delta R i of its beam determined by the rotation angle delta phi, its opposite displacement minus delta R i is also allowed by the constraints. Since the displacement is infinitesimal, the vectors delta R and minus delta R are tangent to the circular trajectory of the points of the rotating beam while they are opposite in direction. Both delta R i and minus delta R i are possible infinitesimal displacements of the beam, that is both of them are virtual displacements. It is obvious that the virtual work done on the mechanical system must vanish, because if the work done along the displacement delta R i was negative then it would be positive for the displacement minus delta R i, and vice versa. We note that d'Alembert's principle can be rephrased in a mathematical form similar to the one of the principle of virtual work. 
we already saw that according to D'Alembert's principle, the fundamental equation of dynamics describes the balance of the forces applied on a body and the inertial force F star given by minus the mass M of the body times the second order time derivative of the position vector R of the body. That is, the vector sum of the forces F I exerted on the body from I equals 1 to N, plus the inertial force F star vanishes. Then the virtual work done by the unconstrained forces F I and the inertial force F star along the virtual displacement delta R of a body can be written as the dot product of the vector sum of the forces F I from I equals 1 to N plus the inertial force F star, and the virtual displacement delta R, which is equal to zero. As a result, D'Alembert's principle states that the product of the vector sum of the unconstrained forces F I from I equals 1 to N minus the mass M times the second order derivative of the position vector R with respect to the time and the virtual displacement delta R vanishes. In this formulation of the principle we only need to consider the unconstrained forces acting on the body, because no work is done by the constrained forces along the virtual displacement delta R.